Good afternoon and welcome to our program, The Red Card Campaign. And our first speaker is Ms. Connie Newman, who has been a, is a member of the National Council of Negro Women and the long history of working internationally. Ms. Newman. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm representing today the African Renaissance and uh, Diaspora Network. And I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, that most of you have not heard of the network. So I'm just gonna take just a few minutes before we talk about the primary purpose of getting together to talk about the network. And the main reason I'm gonna do that is the National Council of Negro Women is a partner now with the network. We had quite a ceremony, Fanny, remember we had a good ceremony in New York. Yes. We signed a partnership agreement and we we're planning to work together on many uh, projects with the African diaspora. The African Renaissance and Diaspora Network, and I'm gonna call it Arden after this, so I don't eat up a lot of your time saying the full name. Uh, is a uh, U.S. Uh, nonprofit organization that was initially conceived in the 1990s. And, and the idea of uh, the organization was it, it's, a, it's a coordinating body, uh, a network of organizations and a network of uh, a very different interests which works to unite efforts uh, towards a single purpose. And that purpose is supporting the advent of African Renaissance by fostering unity between African nations and all people of African descent. And we add, and those who have an interest in Africa and the future of Africa. Arden's methodology revolves around supporting and furthering the sustainable development processes of the United Nations as they relate to Africa and the diaspora. We're not a part of the UN, uh, but we are supporting uh, the sustainable development goals and we do work closely with many of the UN organizations. And I'll mention one activity in a few minutes. We mobilize the passion of government. We have governments from around the world represented, educators, artists, intellectuals, the private sector, civil society, youth, sports. Each, each of these areas has either an organization or individuals representing them in our network to achieve the benchmarks that have been agreed upon. And what we're trying to do is to use both traditional and social media to tell the story and the accomplishments of the diaspora, providing, providing in that way measures toward success and people coming and joining in with us on our goals because they understand who we, we all of us who are part of the diaspora, who we are and what we are about. Now, while the world is growing ever connected, which is wonderful, we are getting ever connected. There is at the same time a decrease and this isn't just about the diaspora. There's a decrease in personal interaction and an increased sense of people, spectatorship, people looking on. And it's leading to, unfortunately, in many occasions, indifference and apathy. And we're hoping to make a link so that that does not affect the diaspora at this very important time in our history in the world. Uh, in the United Nations Charter, words like peace, justice, freedom, social progress, people rights, 
human dignity, all those are words solidarity. Those are words that mean or should mean a great deal for all of us. And in particular, this organization is attempting to respond to bringing about those words for, for all of us, beginning in Africa and with the African diaspora. So we're hoping to facilitate and encourage collaboration between and among the youth and everyone else. And with regard to Africa, the youth represents Africa. All you have to do is country by country, look at the percentages of the population. And so if anyone, any organization now working and caring about Africa does not concentrate on the youth, they're not concentrating on Africa. And one of our priorities in every way, we had a special uh, conference in Niger last year, just about the youth who were representing from all over of Africa. So we have a common home, that's all of us. We have one planet. And, and what we're saying is we all have a stake in making this world one that is, <clears throat> is one that we all want to live in. It's one we all want to bring our children into. But if we don't change our ways, and if we don't take into consideration the rights of one another, and if we don't learn about one another, we are not going to be leaving a worthwhile world for the next generation. So this organization has as a priority to link people of all races, and all interests with the African diaspora to say, we want to start with Africa, building a world where we care about one another enough to make one another's lives better. September 18th, we co-hosted with uh, the Republic of Costa Rica, the UN Population Fund, a virtual summit on women of the diaspora on gender and race discrimination. Uh, we had over 10,000 people who uh, viewed it. We had over 2,000 who've been communicating with us since then. Uh, Dr. Cole, and attorney uh, Mathis were both a part of that program. They had significant roles in the program. And Flo McAfee does the communications work for Arden. The president and CEO is Dr. Jabril Diallo of Senegal. But we have, in addition to that, an illustrious board and advisors from all around the world. Uh, from mayors around the world, uh, from sports, from educators, uh, any, any category and sector, businesses, we have uh, representatives. But I don't wanna take up too much time talking about the organization because we have a very special uh, presentation to you, for you on the red card. Now you don't know what this is, or maybe you do, Red card. Pretend like you don't know, because we're going to take the next few minutes to talk about it and tell you why, why the red card is important. We launched a campaign in March to have over a million signatures by the time of the Federation Football Association uh, in November 2022 in Qatar. We have worldwide support for this and we need more signers. But this isn't just about signing a petition. It's about understanding what the issues are that affect women and girls. And it's about being committed to doing something about how women and girls are treated around the world. We need you to help us expand support and interest in the red card uh, but we owe you an explanation of the campaign. And we have the perfect person to
to talk with you about the campaign. And a perfect person because she's representing Arden in South Africa, and she's the director of the Liaison Office in Southern Africa Development Community. Nan Lelia, I call her Lala, Lala Jian, uh, to really take some time uh, explaining to you the red card campaign, but behind the campaign, what is happening to women and girls around the world that needs to be stopped? What is happening to women and girls around the world that is positive and needs to be expanded? So Lala, would you now uh, take the microphone and then afterwards we are available to have uh, an exchange on the issues affecting women and girls around the world, particularly on the African continent and the diaspora. So Lala. Lala. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Connie. Um, I think the question that everyone is really asking is why the red card campaign and what is the red card campaign? As you have mentioned, Red Card Campaign was initiated in July during FIFA Women World Cup, where the qualifying teams pledged against discrimination and violence of women and girls across the globe. Also, our own South African team, Banyana Banyana, pledged, but it was not just to pledge for the sake of pledging. It was to pledge to give support and to give a red card. As uh, Connie has just mentioned, we launched it globally this year during the International Women Day on the 6th of March with the aim to collect 1 million pledges by 2022 so that all people, women and men are treated equally with the same rights and respect in all places and all types of activities, including in sport, where they should receive the same media attention and be equally recognized for their successes. This initiative correlates with the fifth of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals adopted by all government at the UN in September 2015 to create a more equitable, prosperous, and peaceful world by 2030 free of sexism, prejudice, extreme poverty, and hunger. We ask, why is it that in 2020, in this new era, we are still faced with inequalities and increased gender-based violence? Women are the bearers of the society. However, they're still on the back foot if compared to men. Dr. Jibril Diallo, president and CEO of Eden, said, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights reminds us that all people are equal in dignity and rights. However, we still live in a male-dominated world where men dictate and women are expected to follow. Even on matters that are fundamental to a woman's personhood, women of the diaspora are double Bended because they face discrimination and violence, not only on account of their gender, but also their ancestry. In order to achieve gender equality, it is necessary to build a society in which women and men share equally in the distribution of power and influence and have equal access to education, health, decent work, and livelihoods. Empowering women to participate fully in the economic life across all sectors is essential to build stronger economies, achieve internationally agreed goals for development and sustainability, and improve the quality of life for women, men, families, and communities. And the private sector is a key partner in efforts to advance gender equality and empower women. Workplace discrimination is still alive. According to UN Women, women are paid 16% less 
than men. It is for this reason that on the 18th of September, Equal Pay Day was declared by UN Women. However, women still continue to fight for equal pay and nothing less. The gender pay gap difference is even greater for women and women with children. Why is it that men occupy more powerful positions in the boardroom and more opportunities are given to men? Female leaders are role models and mentors to other women and girls and to many men. However, men are still winning three quarters of new boardroom jobs to this day. A strong representation of women in the boardroom is needed. Women and men must have equal access to opportunity for financial independence, education, and personal development. In many countries, especially African countries, far more boys attend school than girls. As our own Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Education is the key to eliminating gender inequalities, to reducing poverty, to creating a sustainable planet, to preventing needless deaths and illness, and to fostering peace. An educated girl is more likely to become involved in the workforce and in turn bring economy, make stability to her family and communities. Studies have shown that women invest around 90% of their income into their families and communities, thus reducing poverty and improving health, safety and education for everyone. We need to really ensure that there is a balance in education as we see what the impact of education can achieve in building the society. Denying girls education, we're denying them the chance to develop skills that will help them take charge in their homes, careers, com communities, and countries. In schools, there's low availability of menstrual products. The marginalization of girls in their families and the fear of violence and harassment on school commutes all handicapped women's lives opportunities, young girls fall into the hands of older men because they cannot provide for themselves and they need money. In turn, they're promoting teenage pregnancies which affect their education as they are forced to becoming mothers when they should be enjoying being teenagers. Most girls fall prey of human trafficking as well, working as sex slaves, Human trafficking is escalating high every day, and it's time for government and civil society to take charge. And this, is this the society that we want to continue to live in? I don't think so. We have seen how violence against women and girls remain the manifestation of the child marriage. The relationship between Child marriage and educational accomplishment for girls is also strong. In most development countries, it is extremely difficult for girls to remain in school once they get married. As a result, child marriage reduces the likelihood that girls will complete their secondary education. Violence against girls and women can never be excused in the name of tradition or culture. There's practices such as uh, from the Hama tribe in Ethiopia, where women get whipped to demonstrate their love for their men. Such cultural practices needs to be re revisited. Female genital mutilization involves the partial or total removal of external female genital or other injury to the female genital organs for non-medical reasons, FGM is recognized internationally as a violation of the human rights of girls and women. It reflects deep-rooted inequality between sexes and constitutes an extreme form of discrimination against women. The practice also violates a person's right to health, security, and physical integrity the right to be free from torture and cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment, and the right to life when the procedure results in death. 
FMG practices can cause girls to have severe bleeding and problems urinating and later cyst infections, as well as complication in childbirth and increased risk of newborn deaths. More than 200 million girls and women alive today have been cut in 30 countries in Africa, the Middle East and Asia, where FGM is concentrated. Young girls between infancy and aged 15 years are more at risk. A violation of the rights of children, treatment of the health complication of FGM in 27 high prevalent countries cost about 1.4 billion US dollars per year. Limited gains in gender equality and women's rights made over the decades are in danger of being lost due to COVID-19 pandemic. The, U, the UN Secretary Lala, General. Lala, let me interrupt you a minute. They, they're saying, can you talk uh, closer to the microphone and a little bit louder? Okay. Is can that you better? Hear me better now? Is that better? Is that better? Can you hear me? Is that better? Yes, that's better. Just remember to keep it up louder. Okay. It's better. All right, all right. Limited gains in gender equality and women's rights made over the decades are in danger of being lost due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The UN Secretary General, Antonio Gattis, said in April 2020, urging governments to put women and girls at the center of their recovery efforts. Women make up 70% of the health and social care workforce globally and are more likely to be in the frontline health workers, especially nurses, midwives, and community health workers. COVID-19 has not only demonstrated and exposed the disparities that still exist between men and women, but has increased the gender-based violence. The very measure taken to protect population and keep health system afloat leave women and girls especially vulnerable to violence. As communities around the world were forced to stay at home to comply with the lockdown regulations, we saw the women and girls' risk of domestic violence, intimate partner violence, child abuse, and other forms of sexual and gender-based violence in their eyes. It is estimated then that one in three women and girls experience violence in their lifetime. We cannot hide anymore but need to come out and vigorously address gender-based violence. As a result, Eden continued to implement its plan using the power of art, culture, and sports, the language that is understood globally to empower women despite the current COVID-19 pandemic. If women are not empowered, gender-based violence will continue to rise. Gender-based violence cases continue to rise at an alarming rate in South Africa. More than 120,000 victims rang the national helpline for abused women and children in the first three weeks after the lockdown started on March 27, double the usual volume of calls. GBV has now been declared a pandemic in South Africa, and I believe it should be declared a pandemic globally. Helpline cost calls have increased in Malaysia, Lebanon, France, Argentina, Cyprus, and Singapore. In Kenya, cases of sexual gender-based and domestic violence have increased significantly since lockdown. Also in China, domestic violence reports nearly doubled after cities were put under lockdown, with 90% related to the epi epidemic. These are just some of the countries. It is therefore important for government together with civil society to combine efforts to address this challenge. Women who are abused are more prone to mental health. Studies have shown that women with histories of physical violence have significantly higher incidence of major depression 
and that 50% of women who have experienced violence also have a mental health diagnosis. The risk of developing depression, post-traumatic syndrome depression, substance use issues, or becoming suicidal was three to five times higher for women who had experienced violence. Shelters and transition houses have reported that over half of women suffer from major depression and over 33% suffer from PTSD. The Ontario Canadian Medical Health Association found a significant connection between experiences of sexual violence and suicide attempts, a correlation that is twice as strong from women, uh, for women. And women already experiencing mental health issues are vulnerable to violence as those with mental or behavioral disabilities are four times more likely to experience it. Women who experience mental health concerns are less likely to report that they have experienced violence as their mental health is often used to discredit their experience or to blame them for what has happened. Red Card Campaign provides an opportunity to stakeholders including the world of sports and culture, academia, civil society, the private sector and government and the general public to demonstrate to the world and to their respective constituencies their commitment and efforts towards achieving equality for all within the context of the SDGs and to encourage this constituency to become part of the SDG solution. Red card programs have set out to touch on various interventions to achieve gender equality. Some of the programs are already underway but need support in order to maintain momentum that yields desired impact. People want to see change. However, we tend to exclude the perpetrators of violence. It's the key for strong dialogue to be held with men and work together to end the GBV. Time to point fingers is over. Men need to be in the forefront of eradicating discrimination and violence against women and girls. It is such collaboration and intervention that are needed with boys and men's network that groom and mentor a boy child. As a saying in Zulu says, grooming and education must happen during early childhood development. Equally, girls must undergo the same grooming and education at an early age. We need to go back to our roots through the awareness and training programs that promote Ubuntu, humanity. We need to build behavior change programs, mentorship programs to prevent gender-based violence and eliminate the scourge of GBV. Schools need to teach about gender-based violence in all levels. As we are living in the fourth industrial revolution, an exciting period of history, we cannot ignore technology. We must use it to our advantage. Improving lives must include the lived experience of women. And the best way to achieve this is by encouraging the advancement of women into the technology industry. This will be achieved through two components, education and culture change. Boosting women in tech must start, stay, start with boosting women in society, in education and in workplace. This means addressing the root causes of gender inequality, the literacy gap, the pay gap, sexual violence and employment policies. In addressing the gaps, Adding are advocating for women and girls with the aim of empowerment in STEM. In 2019, we entered an exciting period of history when the world expects balance. Globalization 4.0 is about balance. We know that a more balanced, less biased world is a better one. The rise of digital platform can create new opportunities for women to leave them be further behind. As Edin 
through existing collaboration, we will lead initiative of digital inclusive for women goals to bring together other leading women technology companies to boost opportunities for women in emerging markets. We stand for no for IR without women and girls. We are targeting the development of red card application that will reach out to many people in assisting them to identifying and reporting gender-based violence and other social ills, including racism. We are also working very closely with digital companies to use the power of digital world, social media, to reach out to millions, especially the youth. It is through these platforms that action plans are developed to assist curb the pandemic within the pandemic. Last week on the occasion of United Nations General Assembly, Aden, in partnership with UNFPA and Republic of Costa Rica, hosted the Women of the Diaspora Summit on Gender and Race Discrimina uh, Discrimination, a virtual forum that provided an opportunity to explore how discrimination and violence against women and girls have evolved and what can be done to, to reverse this imbalance. Discussion of gender equality, which included the ideas, experiences, and initiatives of the private sector. High-level representatives from international organizations, government, civil societies, arts and culture, and academia. Additionally, with the African diaspora as the sixth region of Africa, the summit served as an enabling environment for discourse between those inside and outside the continent. Women of the diaspora focused on the intersection of good health and well-being, gender equality and climate change. Within this framework, the summit served as an entry point towards creating the sustaining multilateral partnerships. In South Africa, women have been in the forefront in changing the history and the landscape of the country. It was in 1956, during the historic march, a turning point in the role of the women in the struggle for freedom and society at large. Since that eventful day, women from all walks of life became equal partners in the struggle for a non-racial and non-sexist South Africa. Watinta Bafaz, Watinta Imboboto. You strike the woman, you strike the rock. The phrase Watintabafaz Watintimbogoto has come to represent women's courage and strength in South Africa and the world. In observing the Women's Month on the 30th of August, Eden hosted a Kulumambogoto hybrid high tea celebrating and reflecting on women's achievement as well as the problems that discriminate women and girls and the important role that women continue to play in the society. Discussions were held with men over a cup of tea to find solution. We know that where there is tea, there is hope, and that most problems are solved over a cup of tea. The high tea promoted unity between men and women to start a conversation in finding solutions to empower women and girls and to give the red card to gender-based violence. Throughout the lockdown, red card activities, activations were done using powerful voices of sports personalities to send the message out. And we still continue to create awareness, educate, empower, and influence correlate, corrective behaviors. Yesterday, it was a heritage day here in South Africa and jointly with Boots for Africa, an organization that was endorsed by former FIFA president, Sepp Blatter, giving boots to girls and boys, giving them hope to reach for their goals. We had a very prosperous activation with sports personalities. Using the power of arts and culture, adding in collaboration with National Af Af uh, Arts Festival, hosted the first ever Makanda Film Festival, where a full day was dedicated to women empowerment in film and media. 
we celebrated South African actor, Dr. John Carney, and singer and actress, Abigail Tukubeka, who was recently a victim of gender-based violence, giving red card against discrimination and violence against women and girls. The world needs healing. We need to think outside of the box to find solution. What a better way of using a psychodrama, a technique of combining psychology, drama, and dance in assisting with the healing process of the victims of rape, victims of gender-based violence, victims of domestic violence. COVID-19 has allowed us to also be innovative it has allowed us to explore and think of other ways of how one can empower women and youth. And we have a project, Ankara project, making masks for the disadvantaged school kids from the material collected all over the world and in Africa to provide for their families. We've realized how music is powerful. We gotta cut off now. Am I cut off? No. No, you're there. You're good. Got a few minutes left. Okay. You got it. We need. Music is the powerful tool. We need universal songs that will address gender-based issues. The same way in the past where we saw musicians coming together and composing the song, We Are The World. The song that still resonates to us in this era. More documentaries and movies should be created that will send the message loud and clear and promote curbing gender-based violence. These are some of the programs that we engage in and I plead to everyone attending this convention, sisters, let's rise up, let's support the red card campaign and popularize it globally as it will be the campaign that will bring results and change the world for the better. As Maya Angela said, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. We eliminate SDG5, we will solve all remote naming 16 sustainable development goals. Thank you. I therefore urge everyone to give a red card by signing on www redcardpledge.com. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Fanny, how much uh, time do we have? We have about, we're supposed to be through at four. I think we have, we're down to 327. Okay. So we do have, we do have a little more time because- time. not not too much. Okay. What I wanted to do was to have, find, is there someone here who uh, is very tied to soccer or um, football, um, one, of the, one of the sports, if they could just talk just two minutes about the red card. Because it's so so much, so many people don't understand the uh, significance of the red card. I have to admit, when we first came up with the idea, I had to go look it up. So, is there anybody who wants to talk about what happens? When is the red card shown in sports? If not, Lala, you'll have to tell them. But I wanted to see if there's anybody here. Let's see. I'm looking at the chat. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, Lala, explain that now. Do you know what it what happens in sports before I embarrass you? Yes, I do know what happens okay. in sports. Okay. Um, when, when I was growing up, I used to play um, uh, tennis, 
I used to to play a bit of soccer, so okay. I'm very passionate. Yes, okay. so we all know that in sport, when you give a red card, you are saying no. You are saying that you are you are taking the person out of the ground, and it's not just only um, in sport, in soccer or football, but it applies to all codes coding of sports. There is a red card. So what we're saying is we're giving a red card to all forms of discrimination against women and girls. So we are saying enough is enough. They, it needs to be stopped. And, and you've, you're, uh, you've fouled out. You and have, you fouled out. Yes. So you're out of the game and you cannot come back again until you change your ways. Yes. Um, in soccer, when you get a red card, you miss a game. The next game, you're not allowed to play. So what we're saying is permanently, we need to ensure that gender-based violence, domestic violence, all other forms of uh, violence is taken out of the game. We need to build a, a better world, a world that does not tolerate and make a gender-based violence and norm. We need to know that a wrong is a wrong. Thank you, Queen. Thank you, and it's not just uh, it's not just about violence because we are also taking the position that discrimination and racism are violent. That is also violence, and we are. We're thinking about it came up. I'm not going to tell you who came up with the idea, but somebody from NCNW came up with the idea that we uh, think about going around the world and issuing red cards to people who have obviously discriminated or taken some act, which is defined as violence against uh, women and girls. But for now, what we want is over a million signatures uh, by 2020. And if the NCNW really got busy, we, if we got busy, we could, we could do that without blinking. So that's one thing I want to try to do. But I think that, I, yeah, I just think it, it has to mean something. And people have to understand uh, that it's about discrimination uh, it's about stopping violence uh, and and racial discrimination, also women and girls. I'd like to. I attended the the meeting in in at the UN in March, but I'd like to for NCNW members to make the connection, because the connection is with the organization, and the National Council of Negro Women have been in the forefront in terms of violence and women's rights. We, we began at the organization founding. Mm -hmm. In 1946, Mary McLeod Bethune was in San Francisco at the League of Nations that led to the formation of the United Nations. And in that meeting, she could not be an, a delegate because of discrimination, but she spoke with all of the officials, the officials who were putting the, the mechanism together for the United Nations. And she said, all mechanisms developed by the United Nations, there must be a place for persons of color. So we have been there in the forefront advocating for women's rights, violence against women. So it's a natural relationship right. that we should have with the Red Card campaign. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Fanny, should we see if there are any questions? I see chat, but some of them are asking for information, which I'm committed, committing to get to them. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at them. I don't see a question question. Uh, if anyone has a question, otherwise, uh, Lala, are you prepared to share uh, your text? I know that we'll be able to share the information from our virtual summit, um, but anything that you can think of that gives people more information about 
uh, not just the red card campaign, but you gave some very valuable information on how women are being affected by <clears throat> bad behavior in their homes and their workplace and in their nation. Definitely, we've got a presentation <coughs> that highlights all the issues that I've spoken about. Okay. And um, even when you look at the um, presentation that we have, uh, the front page, it's got more information. We can share that. Uh, right. with People are asking for it, and I think uh, the combination of that and the summary from the summit, the virtual summit, will give a great deal of information. But I think it's important for people to understand that uh, discrimination against women and girls is a worldwide problem. And yes. the fact that uh, some countries have lower percentages or some countries don't report as much, there's not as much transparency, does not mean that it's not going on. And the fact that came out in our virtual summit that women are still uh, behind in terms of equal pay for equal work, uh, being selected at all levels in all workplaces, and particularly women of color are being discriminated against, that all of this hasn't gone away. And in fact, we need to be more worried now because the pressure is on everybody because of COVID-19. And so people are gonna be pushing and pulling and, and though it's gonna be survival of the fittest and we have to be careful to protect uh, women and girls in this tough environment that we're in right now. We, we, we need to, I agree with you, Connie, on that. We need to mobilize and we need to partner. And yeah. I, I talk, think about the sustainable development goals. Yeah. In those goals, there are places that women must be a part of all the development projects that are taking place. Mm -hmm. this, the idea of the sustainable development goals is to change attitudes towards women and girls because women and girls have a vital part in any nation on this planet that does not educate its women will not move forward with the yeah. forward movement with the environmental, the economic uh, gains of that country. Women play a vital role in every area of development and economic development. They are the key, the pillows of those areas. Right. I appreciate that. And, uh, and one thing that Lala said, and then F Fanny will wrap it up because I, I don't want to get all any of us in trouble. But one of the things that, uh, that Lala said that I think is important, and that is discrimination and, and violence is everybody's problem. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to get solved unless we have partnerships with men. Men have to recognize it is in their best interest. They're not doing anybody a favor. It is in the interest of their country, of their work, of their home, that women are treated in an equal way. So when we talk about, talk to women's organization, we want women to be involved in the issue, but we are not excluding men because they have as much and maybe even more responsibility to solve the problem and it's only going to get solved if we do it in partnership. So Lala, you did a wonderful job uh, with your presentation. And I've heard, we, Lala and I have traveled over the world <laughs> in new places together. And I am always uh, impressed with you and you, the, the way in which you present. Uh, and I just hope that the people did, uh, did get a great deal out of it and that they will pledge um, the red card and we'll we'll be circulating more information we're going to step up the campaign uh, within NCNW so those are my closing words I don't know uh, Lala if you have something you want to say before Fanny shuts us both down 
Thank you very much, uh, Connie, for your kind, kind word. I would like to, to close um, to say we cannot do this alone and uh, we cannot continue to work in silos. We all need the world to stand up and we have to sign the pledge to give the red card to all forms of discrimination in women against girls in all countries. Time is not on our, on our side. We therefore call upon all people to pledge on the www.redcardpledge.com and let us collect the 1 million pledges that will give us a voice to enable us to call upon world leaders during FIFA World Cup in 2022 to review world policies that discriminate against women and address the, the, the gender inequalities. We must not look away. We must face gender equality head on and declare that enough is enough. Women's lives matter. Nina Simon said, I'll tell you what, freedom is to me, no fear. When you live fearlessly, you are limitless. Think about it. Doesn't freedom in itself lead to the empowerment of women and society as a whole? Thank you very much. Um, we have the first lady. Um, madam. Um, may I say something? My name is Linda Wright. I'm in uh, Southern California. I'm a retired social worker and I uh, investigated child abuse and I was in a therapist with the Child Sexual Abuse Unit. I've worked with men who are, um, have been convicted in, in court with um, domestic violence. I do parenting classes and I work with youth, youth on independent living skills, including young boys who are very, very angry. They're in, angry about all kinds of things and they do things against their girlfriends. And so when I stumbled upon this red card um, campaign, I had no idea what it was, but I'm so glad that I did because this is extremely important. And even at my age, I'm still working and uh, doing counseling virtually. Uh, through Zoom with, with families that the court send me and with other people that just come because they want to have more information about the, uh, dealing with their anger and not, um, not hurting the family that they are. And this COVID situation has made it right. even worse because everyone is stuck in the house, the children, the mothers, uh, the fathers who can't go to work, and um, so the, the anger issues just explode and um, children are in, in dangerous situations and wives and girlfriends are too. So I thank you so much for this presentation. I left my information in the chat. So okay. uh, if you needed or wanted to get in touch with me, All please right. do. This is so important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank have, you very much. We have a few moments where we can exchange uh, conversation and then we have a, a presentation, a slide presentation on the red card campaign. If anyone else would like to share or ask questions. No? Some of the questions, Fanny, uh, when they come up, I've been answering them uh, on the chat. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hello, Honorable. Yes. Hi. Hello. Yes, speak. Yes. Sandra Gibson here, um, NCNW and the Jamaica Diaspora, USA, Southeastern region. Uh, just wanted to chime in to let you know that we as a diaspora here in the U.S., we are working on it and we have a man a men's group also who's gonna be challenged to sign this red card so we are on it and we're looking forward to the partnership for the future thank you thank you so thank you. much well that is so encouraging thank you thank you i know there are a lot of you out there that have something to say so come on and say a few words because this campaign is really helpful and it's urgently needed and it is a part of what we do as an organization, NCNW. 
And as I said before, we have been involved with women's conferences from the beginning of the conferences. In 1940, we were in, a, in the, went to Cuba and we were in South Africa in, in 2001. We were in Beijing. As a matter of fact, Dr. Mm -hmm. Haidt was the leader of the U.S. delegation to the world's mm -hmm. fourth world conference on women. So this is just an extension of what we do as an organization. Right, right. Well, we don't need to over talk our welcome. No. <laughs> okay. Did we have a slide? Pre uh, Lala, you want to do the slide presentation? Would we still have time? I think we, how many minutes we have, it's 3.28 right now. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe what we should do uh, is make uh, the package of the slides available, Lala. I'll, 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 I'll do that, I'll send it through. How many slides are there? We have, I think this one, we've got 10 slides. Okay. Well, yes, I can just show them. Okay. And if people have to leave, they have to leave. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the background of when um, Red Card was initiated. So it was initiated during the Women's World Cup hosted by France, highlighting women's outstanding achievement in sports and generated enthusiasm on all continents. So that's when the journey started. Uh, and may I say Dr. Diallo, who is the president of uh, Arden, uh, was there and he's been very much involved uh, in, with, with the planning of the red card and the next phase. And so we're not on the fringes of it, we're right in the middle of it. Yes. So following the Women's World Cup, many recognize that women are making progress in the workplace, education, and sports like soccer. But around the globe, billions of women and girls still experience numerous forms of discrimination and violence, which too is often ignored. Therefore, women and girls are uh, deprived of basic rights proclaimed in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, denied opportunities and suffer physical and emotional abuse. It prevents them from living truly fulfilling lives and also hamper social, economic and health progress for all human beings. So these are our challenges. You can move to the next There's slide. Dr. That's Dr. Diallo there. So this was during the, um, uh, in the, the global launch um, on the 6th of March, where we, we, we were also um, looking at the solutions. And um, part of the solutions was collaboration. You cannot do this in, uh, alone in silos. And also people need to understand what is the concept of um, the red card? So um, we're inviting uh, men and women everywhere in the world to participate. I think we can move to the next slide. Okay. And um, uh, Madam Connie, here's your question. What is a red card? <laughs> 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 so in soccer, a red card is given to any player on the field when unfair practices take place and to help prevent bad behaviors. Examples of uh, bad behaviors include violent conduct, use of offensive, insulting or abusive language, or gestures, speaking on a player or serious foul play. And in our context, it is um, giving a red card to gender-based violence, discrimination, 
ensuring that everyone is equal. Okay. Can move to the next slide. That is where uh, Dr. Cole, uh, Dr. Janetta Cole, uh, signed an agreement with our, and she gave a major address. We were at the UN um, and signed the red card, but also we have a broader agreement with uh, NCNW to work together on issues affecting women and girls, particularly from the diaspora, the African diaspora. Mm -hmm. Another slide. Okay, and um, what is the red card pledge? Um, can you go back to the page, the previous page? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is the red card pledge? So when you pledge, you pledge to give a red card to all forms of discrimination and violence against women and girls. You pledge to fully respect every other human beings, regardless of gender, culture, color, language, social origin, birth, property, or religion. Hence, to put an end to all forms of discrimination and violence against women and girls. You see my red card? <laughs> I see. <laughs> I have my red card. Ask the whole. <laughs> ask them to show me. I want to show them my red card. My red card. <laughs> so, I have my red card. Please, Tess, Please pull it up so you. I can. I made this. I like to for you to see it. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I see what the problem is. How oh, did I have my red card? Well, Connie, you know I have my red card. I'm very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are they gonna, there's mine. Yes, yes. It's that big enough? No, that's big. Okay. <laughs> I'm serious. I well, listen. <laughs> I was there, and I know how 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 we need to work together. Yeah. Partnership. Right. Yeah. Yes. And how do we get uh, red cards and do we disseminate those to other people? Yes. So, uh, yeah, um, Lala, you want to explain, we go on the, um, the website and we'll, ha we'll disseminate that information. And then that's where you, that's where you pledge mm -hmm. and that's where you convince other people to pledge. Okay. Yes. So you go to www redcardpledge.com where you will be uh, requested to sign online. Um, but I think she was asking, where do you get this card? Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> oh that's a good question. We need to, we need to uh, be able to answer that question because whenever we're there together physically, we have boxes of them, mm -hmm. but uh, we really mm -hmm. haven't shipped them out, have we? We, we need to if people really want them, maybe we can make sweaters. Yes. I mean, uh, T-shirts, they don't call them sweaters, T-shirts or cups. But you brought up something that makes us think about yeah, other ways. Because yeah, I'd, I'd love to give those to various clients that have uh, this as a problem. Ah. So that they can have that in their hand. I'm doing marketing mm. with you. So yeah. they'll have that in their hand when they think in terms of hitting their child or oh, hitting yeah. their wife. Yes. It's great there. idea. They, and um, and it's it's like a um, a cue. That's a great stop, idea. Stop, stop, stop right now. Stop yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. um, and they need cues. They need to know that in their mind, I need to stop and wait and think about something else or think about the in impact or think about the consequences. And so, hey, that's a great idea. We have your, uh, you, you left your uh, information with us. I, I left my phone number on one, one um, chat. And okay. then I write on time you email. Family services. That's my, well, I'll do my email, but that's my okay. company name. 
Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank That's you. a great idea. Yes, this yeah. is, that was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, if you get people to just wave this car, it will the wave it, yes. I mean, it brings you back. It calms you down. I had a meeting the other day, and I was really just besides anger. And I <laughs> took off my red car, and I stopped. I didn't see what I had on my mind, because what I had on my mind was just blowing the place up. And I thought about it, and I said, no, nope, not the time to say that. That's a great idea. So, Fanny, I think we've, we've exhausted what we have to offer. Yes. Thank you so much, everyone who participated. We thank you, Connie, Lala, and all of you. This was a yes. fantastic presentation, great information. I am so glad NCNW is involved. I'm involved, so. Yes. Moving forward. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for moderating. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for the opportunity um, to, to be part of this amazing event under the guidance and leadership of um, Madam Constance Newman and um, also uh, Madam Fallon. Thank you very much. Okay.